is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. Bring her up. Here we go. Let's talk a little Inter Miami season right around the corner. Michelle Kaufman does an excellent job of covering Inter Miami on a daily basis for the Miami Herald. Follow her on Twitter at Kauf Sports. Good afternoon, Michelle. How are you doing? Good. How are you? It's been a while. Very good. Yes. Wow. Yes. Yes. Uh, thank God we got the season here. But I loved your article because, you know, it's kind of like, yeah, this is uh, it's kind of a bait and switch almost in a way. We we're talking about all these stars, all these big names. And now we're down to a whole bunch of young guys, which, listen, maybe Chris Henderson has a little Miami Heat touch. And he can find his own Duncan and Max Struess and Yurtsevin and that kind of stuff uh, on the pitch. That would be nice because there's all kinds of different young guys that they've picked up along the way. But it's year three. This is when we're supposed to be talking about a team that maybe is built up to win a title right now. And that's not what we're talking about. Yeah. I mean, basically, they, to be honest, they're pretty much blowing up the team and starting yeah. over in year three. I mean, uh, it's almost like I'm calling it, you know, Inter Miami 3.0. You know, the first season, they had the first season. Then last year, they brought in Chris Henderson, they brought in Phil Neville, and they, they tinkered with the roster. They tinkered with the roster, but basically they kept the majority of the roster the same as the first year. This year, partly because they had to reduce their salary, their payroll because of, of fines for that stupid Blaze Matweedy deal that they made. Part They didn't make, but the, the previous uh, regime made. Um, partly because of that, but also because the team was never Chris Henderson's or Phil's team. This team was the team that they inherited. And uh, there were chemistry issues. There were some chemistry issues in the locker room. You know how those things happen in sports. Um, and... It's not, it, it was not their team. It was not the team of guys that Phil Neville wanted. It was not the team of guys that Chris Henderson wanted. They were trying to make it work and it clearly didn't work. They did not make the playoffs in year two, having all those players they had, they did not make the playoffs and the biggest salary. They had the largest, the biggest payroll in the whole league and they did not make the playoffs. So in their minds, they needed a radical change. And, you know, Phil Neville said we had to be brave. We had to make very tough decisions that people maybe were not going to like. But they felt that it's in the best interest of the club going forward. And, you know, they got rid of, I mean, some big names. They got rid of Lewis Morgan. Uh, you know, Leandro gonzalez Perez is gone. Blaise Matuidi gone. Rodolfo Pizarro gone. Nico Figal is in negotiations to be gone. Um, you know, so a lot of uh, McCoon gone, Christian McCoon, who was a young player who was coming along. Julian Carranza, mm, you know, he never really panned out. He, yeah. was, over, he was overpriced from the beginning. I, I thought Volkun was starting to find his way a little bit on defense, actually, last he year. He was. That was actually, to be honest, from talking to the people inside, that was their, their toughest decision. One okay. of the toughest decisions was him. You know, Lewis Morgan – was a big lot. They basically had to get rid of a few people. That my favorite have player, value. man. That's my favorite people player. Have, I know. Me too. People that have value. And, you know, when they needed to get rid of some players, who are the players the other teams want? The good players and the players with value. So Christian McCoon is a young, talented guy who's on the Venezuelan national team. So he had value and Lewis Morgan had value. Nobody was clamoring for Gonzalo Higuain at $6 million salary. So, so they're left with him. I will tell you, I was there the other day, and I have my reservations as everyone about how he's going to be this year, whatever. He's definitely in shape. He's coming in much better shape than he was last year's uh, training camp. And he is highly motivated. And, you know, Phil Neville said, and then Gonzalo repeated, he has lost his little buddy group. You know, his guys are gone. His brother is now a coach at the at the academy, so his brother's not in the locker room with him. He hung out with the with the Argentine guys. The Argentine guys are gone. Okay? Carranza's gone. Pellegrini's gone. LGP is gone. And Nico Figal is about to be gone. It almost seems like they did like an Argentine purge, and then his brother retired, sort of a forced retirement. So <clears throat> he's now 
having to connect with everybody else on the team that he wasn't really connecting with that much last year. There was kind of a, you know, Argentine group that stuck together. Right. That little clot has been broken right. up. It, that little click is broken up. And now he's getting to know some of the other guys on the team. And he, his role this year is going to be to lead these young guys. And the young guys really do look up to him. They really do look up to him. Every All those young players, when you ask them, the new guys who have come in, every one of them mentions what an honor it is to me, Gonzalo Higuain, and to watch him train and to watch what he does. And they're learning from him and this and that. So, um, you know, Chris Henderson has had a very, very successful career in MLS with Seattle. Uh, they probably should have hired him in the first place from the beginning. He was the runner up for the job. And from what I heard, he came in with binders full of ideas for the club and they decided to go in another direction, went with Paul McDonough. But Chris is a super organized, very uh, meticulous, very serious person. And <clears throat> one thing really stood out to me that Phil said the other day, Phil said at the press conference, we are no longer on the, in this club. We are no longer signing players just because a friend of a friend said that the guy is good or because an agent that we know is friends with somebody else's agent. <laughs> they have a seven step process now that they're doing with their scouting department where they're watching every player play in a minimum of 20 to 30 games. They're doing all kinds of analytical. They have their analytics department doing career analytics of each guy and all this stuff. So they're vetting. They're doing a lot more vetting. And so the players that they've brought in, it still remains to be seen. Obviously, we have they haven't played one minute. It remains to be seen. What I can tell you is there is a plan in place. And Chris Henderson is as meticulous a person as you could meet. And he's not just going out there randomly plucking players because some agent in Argentina says this guy's good. He's not doing that. And the and the the suggestion with that comment is that that is how it was done before. Yeah. 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 It's a, it's a shame because they, they had an opportunity and now they've kind of lost all that momentum from the beginning. And I wonder how people are going to respond in this town, how, cause you saw as season two wore on less and less people were in the stands. So I'm hoping, and we're not very patient in this town. I know, look, I know the crazies, La Familia at, at the end, those, those, those those folks will be there no matter what. I get it. Maybe not as many actually mm -hmm. will be there, but that's the one thing that they have lost a lot of their momentum now uh, on the stadium side. Uh, talk to us a little bit about what's going on with Miami Freedom Park because you wrote a, a little bit about it. It looks like there is some progress being made there. There is progress being made there. There's a 500-page lease agreement that has taken – literally a year and a half to put together um, because basically there are five commissioners. I'll, I'll, I'll sum it up this way. There are five commissioners. Four of them have to say yes out of the five. It has to be a four out of five, not three out of five, four out Ooh, of five. I th I, and I thought they only had three soccer people on that board. There's one. And then there's Manolo Reyes has already said that he's a no for life. He's already said that he will not come around no matter what. So basically, they have to get four out of four. The other four, if Manolo Reyes really sticks with that, that he is not voting for this Miami Freedom Park no matter what, they need to get the other four to be on board. In order to do that, they have been negotiating this contract, this lease agreement, to include all of the things that will placate those four commissioners. What is it that they want? What is it will make them vote yes? You know, one commissioner says they have to have a $15 minimum wage for everyone who works there. Okay, they put that in there. A commit, You know, they want parks, whatever space they're going to use for concrete buildings there. They want that amount of space being made parks, other parts in the city. They've agreed to that. So they've made a lot of concessions. They've been doing a lot of negotiating for the last year and a half to try to come up with a lease agreement that the commission will be in favor of and will vote yes to. Um, the vote is supposed to be coming up now in February, in the next few weeks. They have the 500 page lease agreement is there. It's available. The Miami Herald has it in hand. We are evaluating it with our staff. Um, it's a very thick document. And, um, you know, if the city agrees, if the commission agrees to, to vote yes, 
on this lease agreement, then they can start moving forward. What they have to do is the environmental cleanup, this and that. Jorge Mas told me for the story that I wrote, for the column I wrote, that um, he would hope that if it passes, that he thinks it will, he's optimistic, that they could put a shovel in the ground in the fall. That would be his dream. Shovel in the ground in the fall and have the thing built um, in late 24, which means they're playing this year in Fort Lauderdale. They're playing next year in Fort Lauderdale. And to be honest, maybe 24, Fort Lauderdale, depending. Let me, I'm going to run something by you, uh, somebody that uh, told me about this. And I was shocked because I'm one of those that I believe Moss will get it done and, 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 and get it forward. But gentleman told me that it's never going to happen. And he also told me that all the judges play there and they're going to do their best not to make, to make sure that it doesn't happen so the judges can keep their uh, course. Because apparently a lot of the Dade County judges play at that course. That's what I'm told. I don't know how true this is, mm -hmm. but apparently the, the judges are personally taking this thing, and I don't know how much they can influence or whatever with the commissioners and the vote and all that stuff. I it's know that Miami. They, It's I, Miami. I know it's my. That's why I think that Moss will get it done. But I heard that three out of the five were soccer people. So who's that fourth one? Because you already mentioned one that's out. Who's that other one that could be teetering? Do you know the specific name? Well, no, no. It's not about soccer or not. It's really not about soccer people. I don't really think that that's the point. Well, I think well, it's people who agree with the plan right, and would right. be amenable to the plan. And and no, the new one is a new, there's a new commissioner who was just voted in. I think her name is Christine King. So I, she's not on, she's not on one side or the other. She's a new commissioner. I don't think she's, pro or con. I think, I think all of these commissioners at the end of the day, they want to get reelected. It's politics. They want to get reelected and they want to do what is best for their constituents and what, so all of them want to promise their constituents that, you know, that they're going to get X, Y, or Z, or that this is not going to happen, or this is going to happen if they have this part. It's, it's enhancing our community in this way. In, in this words. way. So, right. If you're if you're the commissioner that's in this district, how is that part going to be able to help your district? That is what this 500 page document is. It is the the mass. It is the inter Miami ownership group saying, you know, the, and Jorge Mas family saying, if this park is built, this is how it will help your district. This is how it will help your district. Yes, we're going to have 15 dollar minimum wage. We're going to build parks. We're going to do this. We're going to have make sure that the people who are hired are from the neighborhood, this, that, or the other. You know, there are a lot of things. It's a very, very dense document um, trying to get this thing through and trying to make it be something that the commissioners would be in favor of. The commissioners are the ones who have the vote on this. The public voted. The public voted yes. The public voted yes to give them the opportunity to have this no bid thing, whatever. They voted yes. Um, but now the commission, the commission has to say, yes, we think this is a good idea to give a 99 year lease of public land to this group. And here's why we think it's a good idea because they're going to, in addition to have a stadium, they're going to do this. They're going to do this. They're going to do this. They're going to do this 500 pages worth of, of what's going to happen. So this is all taking place right now, right now, as we speak during these weeks and days, the commissioners are being briefed on the document each commissioner one by one will be briefed by the city manager and the mayor on this document and saying here's the document here it is 500 pages please go through it what are your concerns whatever that's what's going on now the conversations with the commissioners and um you know and still even if it goes through even if it goes through and even if they were to somehow get a shovel in the ground in the fall Jorge himself said, you know, that is a two year build. That is a oh, two yeah. year, uh, a two year construction. So we're talking about the end of 24 and, you know, the season is March to October, March to November. So we're talking about this season in Fort Lauderdale, next season, 23 and probably 24, you know, these yeah. next three years are probably going to be in Fort Lauderdale, to be honest. And with delays all over the world for anything that you order nowadays and steel and everything else, uh, I don't know. It might even be more delayed. Yeah, uh, I'm sure one of the things I'm sure one of their their 
goalposts that they probably have in mind is the World Cup, the 2026 World Cup. Right. Uh, that would not be a big enough venue to no. uh, to host World Cup games. But I still think that somehow they want to parlay the World Cup into having their new stadium and all that stuff, the soccer excitement that'll be. They, they might be. They might be able to host. Um. Um. Uh, what's it called? Qualifiers. 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 That's, that's what. That's yeah. what they may be able to do. Yeah. Uh, leading, leading up to that. All right. Uh, before I let you go, playoff team or not playoff team? What do you think is or you know what? It's so I'm gonna I'm gonna go out on a limb. I have no idea. I will preface this by saying I have seen one practice, 45 minutes. That is the sum total. And some of the guys are not even in yet. So I haven't even seen, okay. you know, Gene Malta, okay. who's supposed to be their best signing right now. He is not, he's not even here yet. Right. Um, so I haven't even seen him. And then there are still two pieces, apparently, that they are trying to sign. Two more pieces that Chris Henderson said that the puzzle still has a couple of pieces missing that they would like to get done. They'd like to get it done before the season. One of them may have to wait till the summer. So I don't know what this team is really going to look like. I cannot even tell you what the starting lineup will look like. I have no idea. <laughs> I am going to go on a limb and say that they will make the playoffs. I'm only saying it because... Chris Henderson and Phil Neville have to. I believe that the team has to make the playoffs this year because if they don't, they will be deemed a complete failure if three years in a oh, row. Oh, that's not fair. that's not fair to Chris Henderson. Okay. Uh, now, now I think we can make more of a judgment on Neville this year, watching him coach these players and see what mm -hmm. he can get out of them. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I think it's a little. It's, it's a longer build. It's a longer yeah. build. Yeah, I got to give Henderson way more time, dude, before I judge him. I got to give him two more years, to be honest. Right. But I'm talking about the fans. I, think if they don't, I feel like if they don't, I'm not saying fair or not fair to Chris Henderson. I have faith in Chris Henderson. I do. I do, too. I, do. I have faith in Chris Henderson, and I saw what he did in Seattle, and he's one of the most respected uh, executives in this whole league. Anyone you talk to and you mention the word Chris Henderson – they're like, oh my God, oh my God, Chris Henderson. Neville is still the unknown. Neville is the unknown for me. That's the guy that I'm measuring this year a little bit more. Right. I need to see him. I need to see him, you know, like I watch Spo all the freaking time get max out of everybody. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. I don't care who you are. If you just signed a 10 day contract, you're going to play your best basketball when you put on that uniform. I need to see that from Phil Neville. I, I, I don't even need the playoffs. But I need to see that you can develop guys, that you can see some structure, some continuity, some chemistry out there. I need to see you do that. I need to use, I need to see that you developed an identity with this team by by mid year. I don't want to see formation changes and all kinds of changes and constantly not being able to put out you know the the, the same lineup and all those things. That's how I'm going to measure Phil Neville this year. But mm -hmm. but Chris, I, I got to give him more time. I got to be a little fair with him, right? Yeah, we'll see. I just say I just think the fans, if they have another bad year and don't make the playoffs two years in a row and lost in the first round the first year, which was an extended playoff, so they really did not finish right. in the top seven. Yeah. So the truth is, if they don't finish top seven this year, that will mean that the first three years they did not finish in the in the playoffs. Um, I think the fans will be extremely disappointed, and and it will be hard to energize right. them. You know. They need right. to get energized this season. And these names, like I mentioned in my column today, I raised my hand. I was one of the ones who said they have to have big names. They have to have at least a few big names. And you know what? Great now, point in your article. I'm saying, now I'm saying maybe not. I looked at, I put in my column today, all the top scorers in the league last season were guys yep. who were no, who came from nowhere, who came from a tiny club, you know, in Uruguay, a second division club who came from Norway, who came from the Danish league. The guy in Nashville came from the Danish league, Mukhtar. These are not world beaters. These are not World Cup. Blaise Matuidi is the French World Cup winner. And what did he, you know, how much did he contribute? So I'm not going by resume anymore. I'm really not going by resume anymore. I think in this league, uh, that's not really the way to win. I've, I've kind of come to that conclusion. I didn't now. realize that until I read your article. And then I went, wow, that's right. It's true. You know what I mean? So then I started going, well, maybe Henderson can find, you know, the, the, the next Mukhtar, the next camera, the next Mukhtar, the next Castellano, whatever. These were not big stars coming in. None of them were World Cup winners. None of them had big clubs behind their name. And yet those teams are winning. And at the end of the day, names are no names. The fans want a winning team. 
and they 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 want them to win however they can and if it means bringing a Amen. bunch of guys you've never heard of and we get to know who they are that's fine i'm up for that this year so oh, i'm with you there no i mean I, I just want them to win i don't care who they are i don't need a i don't need a big name look the the, the town is going crazy because you're not playing yurtsevin Right. That's all you need to know. Yeah. So yeah. that's how we're going to be as fans, dude. Mac Collins, all year long, I was screaming at the top of my lungs, Flo, what the hell are you doing? Play Mac Collins. All he does is make plays. Mm -hmm. So you perform. We love you. Right. We become your fan. You know what I'm saying? So a Breck Shea, we know he's not the most talented guy. But he's super but as, popular. Yes. We love him because the effort is always there. The guy is trying. The guy is a big man in the box, and he finds a way. He actually scores some goals. So Breck Shea becomes kind of a, a lovable character for us. You know what I exactly, mean? So exactly. I think they have a chance if they're those these underdogs come from nowhere. And we didn't know who Lewis Morgan was either, but I'd never heard of Lewis Morgan in my life Perfect. when he got here, and he turned out to be the MVP, Perfect. literally was voted MVP the first season. We had no idea who he was. Now we're like, oh, my God, how can they get rid of Lewis Morgan? Two years ago, we didn't know who Lewis Morgan was. That's how sports is. We have very short memories. Amen to that. Follow her on Twitter at Cough Sports. More importantly, catch her work there at the Miami Herald, as always. Michelle, thank you. Appreciate you. Sure, we will, good to uh, see you again. again. Yes, yes. You know, the season starts. We'll, you know, we'll uh, we'll talk enter here. This this platform will talk soccer, okay? Thank oh, you. And we can talk you on basketball too next time. That's right. That's right. It was a nice little win yesterday, man. That yes, was, uh, for sure. That was a lot. He's such a good coach. God, he's a really good coach. Yep. Yep. So good. One of the best we've ever had in this town, man. Yes. Agreed. Really. He, agreed. he goes right up there with Ron Frazier, man, and, and, and UM Lore. He's just, I get it. He doesn't have the championships, but he is just, he's special, man. He's a wizard in his own way. Yes, so, he is. He's yeah. beaten Duke and Carolina in the last two weeks in Syracuse. So, you know, these are big-time programs, and Miami's beating them. Yeah, no doubt yeah. about it. Michelle, as always, thank you. Appreciate you. All right, take care. Bye-bye. Good to see you. Thank you. Good to see you. There you go, the great Michelle Kaufman from the Miami Herald. And This is the Big O Show.